He'd always hated the small, cold room, the low bed, the harsh shower. Now, here, in this new life of his, where he had free reign to choose just about everything, he picked every element of his life to be the exact opposite of what it once was. The cold blue room was now a vibrant, warm red, soft blankets and pillows in every corner. The low bed was now almost at the ceiling, the top bunk had a tent covering, and he felt safe. It was his own private space that no one had violated, which he had never had before in his life. Even Michael's room, which had had no cameras, was not really a place where he could have privacy, no matter how alone he was. He had adored the large, pale orange bathtub, had obsessed to the point of bathing for hours. The steam and the feeling of being surrounded by warmth was amazing. Of course, once they had finally been able to confirm that he was indeed an adult and not a child the way they initially thought, it was expected of him, once he had recovered from his trauma and adapted to society a bit more, to earn some kind of a living. He was allowed to keep the room, so long he worked on the farm, same as he did when he first came there. Alex smiled, held the rosary around his neck, thanked God for the thousandth time that Gary was sent on his path. As he lay soaking in the bath that morning, he looked at his hands again. They were no longer bruised, they no longer hurt, except in intense moments of emotional turmoil. Then, he could swear that the pain returned and flowed through his hands without cause. It ached, and he could not make it go away, particularly when he woke up after a bad dream, though he seldom woke up alone now. Michael had been nowhere to be found, but they were able to save Krista. Things had not immediately gone smoothly in his social interactions when he returned to the farm. He needed to find ways to make peace with what had changed in his mind in those last few days when he was still in the community. At first, he felt that he was still alone, but soon came to realize that the outside world offered endless opportunities for socializing, for finding new people. And that was, after his mental break, what he needed more than anything. He couldn't talk about it with just anyone, but as soon as he'd realized who was or wasn't interested, it was all he could talk about. He had expected to find people when they went out. The boys liked to scout the local bar nearby, and the younger ones frequented the mall. And though he did, he found it was more common for people who already lived at or near the farm to take an interest. Krista had maintained her interest in him, and he had promised himself that although he was what people in the bar referred to as polyamorous, he would stick to only one woman. But the men, the guys at the farm liked to pretend to chase girls around, but the vast majority of them had, if nothing else, made numerous passes at him. Another person might report harassment, but the attention was not unwelcome to Alex. He soon found out that men were much more likely to do whatever it was he'd asked of them, so long as they could have him. The thought to him that he was not only surrounded by people, but people who wanted him was intoxicating. The only exception seemed to be Gary and Miss Kathy. He had heard she had a daughter, but hadn't seen her on the farm. Krista, for some time, had helped in the kitchen, but in the end moved on to open a business, the nature of which Alex wasn't entirely sure of. Krista, although clearly wanting Alex, had been hesitant to fulfill his requests the way the workers on the farm had. The last time they spoke, he had set a rule that she deemed unfair, and left. She no longer lived on the farm, and he hadn't seen her again. Since his mental break after those few days of being isolated the way he was, something had snapped. It had begun during his last punishment from the father, and had come to a completion on that final day, less than an hour before Gary and the others had found him and taken him to the hospital. Within a few days, he could no longer live without the thing that he had always desperately needed, but never had. Not until Krista and Michael, as well as the thing that he had lived with for as long as he could remember, and suddenly no longer had. He sighed, realized that the bath water had become cold. Well, not cold, but below lukewarm temperature. He got out, 
took one of the soft towels, held it in his arms comfortingly before wrapping it around himself. He dried off in the bathroom, drained the water, and opened a small window to let out the steam. When he stepped back into his own room, Krista was waiting for him. He wasn't sure how to react to seeing her there. The last time they had spoken, he had felt angry with her. But since then, he'd come to the conclusion that, as much as he had a right to decide not to be with her, she had that same right to refuse him and his requests. Hello, was all he said, not wanting to say something he'd regret. Hi, she said back. He went over to his closet and grabbed the clothes he had set aside for the day. It was his day off, and the boys were going to the bar. Then later that evening, he had plans with one of them to come back home alone with him. I've been thinking about what you said, she told him. Oh? At first, I was angry with you, she said. Why did that sound familiar, he thought. But then I realized that, in reality, this is perfect for me. If that's the case, then why did it take you until now to realize it, he asked, frustrated. Aren't you glad? I'm giving you good news, she insisted. It's not good news if I don't know why, he said starting to get dressed. Because if I don't know that there's a good reason, you could change your mind again at any time. You did previously. I didn't know about the father until then. Gary had pulled me aside, told me about how you grew up, and what you did to yourself on that day. Alex realized what he had suspected all along was true, that the father had singled him out, had punished him differently and more harshly than the rest. He clenched his teeth. But now, I just want to be who I was before again. I don't want the things that were always the same, that I just didn't know about, to stop me. I see. That makes a lot of sense. But is this who you really are? Is this really something you even enjoy? He asked, skeptically. I don't want to force you into things just so that you can sleep next to me, he said. Alex, it was never about that, she sighed. Just come here, she insisted, though he was still hesitant. She grabbed him by the wrist, twisted his body around to pull him closer. Alex winced in pain, felt the unnecessary resentment and anger fade away and be replaced by heavenly ecstasy, as the woman he'd loved since early childhood leered over him with beautiful, evil eyes. You have your rules, he heard her say. I don't sleep next to you unless I hurt you. The pain in his wrist was more intense now. And now, I have my own rules, understand? He nodded quickly, starting to pant and losing concentration, hoping that the list wouldn't be too long so that he'd remember it all. Good. The first rule is that from now on, you refer to me as your mistress, she insisted. He nodded, and her grip tightened again. He let out a small cry. My only other rule is that if I see you with another woman, I will never speak to you again. I know about the men. You can have as many as you want. You can even have another woman if you like, but I don't want to see her. Do you understand? She let go of his arm and he fell, all the blood rushing to his hand and causing that wonderful feeling that made his toes curl in pure bliss. She let him writhe in it for a few moments before pulling him up by his shirt. She'd gotten stronger, he noted. He wondered if she went through the trouble for him, or if it was something she'd always wanted to pursue. He loved it either way. He loved her. He reached out his uninjured arm to pull her into a kiss. She bit his lip, and threw him onto the lower part of the bunk bed. C Krista, listen to me, he breathed out heavily. She moved right in front of him, stared down at him, and he continued. I never wanted any woman besides you. Whether you're here or not, I've loved you since we were children, he confessed. Her gaze did not soften, and he loved her the more for that. There are no other women, and I promise you there never will be, he finished. She smiled, sadistically. You're going out today, right? How much time do we have? The rules had been different for the men on the farm. As much as he wanted to also tell them, if you don't hurt me, you don't sleep next to me. He knew that would mean that he'd never sleep alone again. 
as much as he loved being surrounded by people, he also needed time on his own, to be alone, to enjoy his privacy. So, that night, when the man he had made arrangements with had left, Krista came back, and it was her who crept into the top bunk with him. She was the only one he had ever allowed in there. I have a surprise for you in the morning, she said, smiling the evil smile only she could smile. He felt his heart race in excitement, he couldn't think of anything to say. Instead, he just took her hand in his and smiled back, joyfully. Neither of them slept much that night. Instead, they lay awake, talking excitedly about their plans for the future. Krista finally told him about her business, the pastel cafe that she had opened. She had explained that they were soft, bright colors, and he wondered why she chose that aesthetic. After all, she was always dressed in black and dark shades of purple, a style that she referred to as goth. He told her, in turn, about wanting to get an education. There was a woman who had taught him to read and write as a child, but none of the people within the community, at least the children, had ever had any formal schooling. He thought about getting a GED and learning about agriculture. He not only felt that he owed a lot to the people on the farm, but felt that he enjoyed working there and wanted to contribute as much as he could. He finally fell asleep, feeling warm, and happy. Thank you for listening and watching. All links and references are in the description below.